This is the 53rd year of the Connie at Lions Club Safety Town, and it's been a real pleasure for uh, as, an, as an, in, in being in charge of Safety Town. This will be my 35th year as the director, director of Safety Town, and I enjoy it every year. Last year we didn't have it because of the COVID, and uh, this year we've gotten a lot more kids because they wanted to go last year, but we allowed them to come. So you have you regularly just have kindergartners, but you have kindergartners and first graders this, this year. year. Yes. Well, they learn all the safety rules, and they learn the safety signs. They learn how to ride their bike, pretending it's a car. Always go on the right side of the road to follow the stop signs and slow down signs. And we even have a pretend train stop where the, the rails go down, and uh, the kids like that too. I recognize a lot of people and they know me from being here when they were young or that now they bring their kids and so it just keeps rolling with the family. And they, this is five days a week and then on Friday you go to station three and on Saturday is graduation. Right and we're it's um, it starts at nine by the time the children go out for 20 minutes and show their parents how you ride around the safety town and then come in, give out their certificates. It's probably close to 10. This is my 10th year. Wow. It's important for the little kids to learn safety. We do lots of safety. We do the, I do the street signs with them specifically, and I, do, I run Safety Town with them, where they ride their tricycles around the town, and they learn you know, to stay on the right side of the road, stop for red lights, uh, look and go on green lights. Um, so we do all that fun stuff outside. And then inside, we do like classroom activities. Madeline uh, Palasola handles the inside instruction, and she goes over like um, water safety, stranger danger, uh, railroad safety, gun safety, um, we do uh, lots of different, bus safety, um, I think that's about everything, but we go. Stop, like a stop. 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 Can you guys be a little louder? Stop. stuff they do plays about uh, um, poison safety so those, there's a play on poison there's a play about stranger danger that some of the instructors act out with helpers so it gets them real involved they get to learn lots of things so they know you know hey if they see kitchen cleaning supplies they don't go under the sink and we don't touch we don't taste so we have sayings for a lot of stuff um, do, you, do you find that the programs like this teaching a safety town might help you later the, there, the fewer emergencies you get. Uh, oh, absolutely! Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the kids. Uh, usually, the kids tell me they report back to me 
after the first day or the couple days, they'll tell me, well, we saw a car run a st stop sign, or <laughs> you know, I saw a railroad sign, or I saw the hospital sign. So they look, they start recognizing these things, and they know, like with a hospital, if there's an emergency, they can see the blue hospital sign with the arrow, and they know which way to go to get to the hospital. So I think it helps later on because they they know, you know, if they're going to be around pools at home, if they're going to be around a pond or a lake, they know to have somebody watching them while they're swimming to wear a life jacket. We go over uh, Fireman Frank from, he's retired, I believe from Asheville Township. He comes every year and he goes over pool noodles like toys mm. and life jackets. What's gonna actually help you and what's not. So they get to learn a lot of different things like that to help them later on. What about? If a stranger says, starts talking to you or says, come with me, what should you do? for three years. I love being with the kids and it's really cool to see them throughout the week learn more things and they love doing it like the songs and they get really involved. It's cool to see them just grow throughout the week. So they change a lot, they learn a lot. Yeah, it's so fun. The first day they're so quiet and shy and throughout the week they're all screaming the songs and they just really love it. So you work at the Dairy Queen, right? Yeah. Do kids ever come into the Dairy Queen and see you and like? They get excited, yeah. That's I like meeting the kids places like here, and then I help with dance too, and they really like to get to know me. So one day this fire safety house comes, the kids go in and they have like a smoke machine, and smoke fills the house, and they crawl out. It's so funny, they get all nervous, and they always beg for us to go in with them. They come out all excited and say how fun it was. They like doing that. And then we have a canine handler bring his dog. The kids. Now we, we do a lot of stuff together. We work really hard. But when I go to work, it's his playtime. Yeah, he doesn't go to work. He goes and he searches and that he considers it his playtime with me. So he doesn't ever have a bad day at work. He always has a good day at play. <laughs> so what are what are some things that you think I use his tools that I use them for? If we do drug work and article searching and tracking, he uses his nose. His nose is his most important tool. And sometimes, like other dogs, he can use his teeth for bite work. 
So we never, never, if we ever get bit by a dog, we never pull away, okay? There's okay. a, a natural instinct for a canine or a dog is that when they, when something pulls away, their prey drive gets engaged and they start to thrash their heads around. So we never pull away, okay? I know it's hard to remember that, but we got to try to keep that in mind, all right? So we do training. Uh, he had a year's worth of training before he went to service with me. And we train every single month, once a month. He was purchased with a fundraiser through the city of Kania. Now when K9 Cash, when he gets old enough and he retires, he gets to go home and stay home with me. Can anybody guess what kind of breed he is? What's that? Malinois. That's right, he is a Belgian Malinois. Looks kind of like a German Shepherd, but just a little bit smaller, and a little lighter, and they're faster. I do have kids. I have four kids at home, and he sees them as part of his pack. How does he get rewarded for doing his job? He gets rewarded with playtime with me. Now, his playtime is usually tug time. He like he gets really amped up and gets uh, worked up when we go to work and have fun and play. So he's got to get that energy out somehow. So and this is his toy that he likes to get his energy out with. So I'll show you how he does that. Okay. Hey. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! He's so strong! Oh, he's gonna win it! Oh boy! And that's his. That's his playtime. This is tug time with me. That's his favorite toy. Oh, yes. oh, boy. oh boy. Oh, he's gonna get it. Oh, he's gonna get it. Oh. His teeth are super, super strong. About 400 pounds per square inch. Well, that's a lot. So they learn a lot of manners too, and I think that really helps them out. Like they, nice manners makes you nice to know. We always say to them, they always say thank you. So some of these, this is their first socialization, correct? I mean, they haven't yeah. been to kindergarten yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. show you some of the things that we do here at the fire station, some of the trucks, some of the equipment. We're going to put somebody in a suit to show you what they're going to look like when they come into your house if you have a fire or something. Um, everybody know where to go when you have a fire? You don't, yeah. hide, you don't hide anywhere. Outside. You go outside and you meet with your parents. You should have a place to meet if you do have a fire in your house. You should be able to go out the same way or several different ways to be able to meet with your parents somewhere at a big tree, a fire hydrant across the street, a neighbor's house, something like that. Everybody knows that you call 911 if you have a fire at your house, right? And once you go out, you never come back in. You never go back into your house, no matter what. If you have dogs or cats, they usually get out. If the door's open and they'll run away, they'll run around the neighborhood or something and you can pick them up later. But you never leave, once you leave the house, you never go back in. Think about the stretchers, it's all electric. Push the button, bring it out, one person can use it. Press the button and the legs go down. That's on the right off the, okay, right out. Isn't that neat? Back up a little bit, Mike. Sorry, a little bit, Michael. I didn't realize it. No, you're fine. You went. And then uh, take, take it all the way down. Any people hop on. 
Now it's like a bed, huh? Can I put you on there? And See? Bring it back up. Who wants to sit on there? One person. All right. Kim. <laughs> Braxton, come on over, right. buddy. Sit right down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your feet up like you're in a bed. We strap you in. I'm gonna put a seatbelt on. Remember to click it, right? Buckle up. Make sure you don't. Make sure you wouldn't fall out. Put your hand. Put your hand up. Yep. There's your side. Okay. Ready? You're going. Now he's gonna get tall. Watch. Watch. Back up a little bit, guys. Is He's gonna hook it back into the ambulance. Watch. He slides in. Watch. Is it gonna be fun? Now we don't have to lift you up. Look. I'll tell you. Ready? Watch. Your wheels are off the ground. And then you're gonna go backwards, right? He's gonna roll. No. I just the ambulance. No. We go to the wherever we go to the hospital. Bye bye. 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 See? I don't have What is this? Go ahead. I can take that mirror thing for you. It wasn't heavy. It wasn't heavy. It wasn't heavy. You lit yeah. that? Yeah. No, we're not. We're not. Oh, so. So. Hey, Come back here. Hey, there you go. Can I try again? Yeah. I lift it all the way up. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Michael. That was pretty cool, huh? Okay, go right back to the group. Watch your head on the door there. Nathan, come on down, buddy. Okay. Big step. Okay, right back to the grip there. Gabby, come on down, sweetie. You got it? Oop. If I hold your hand, you can kind of hop if you want. You want to hop down? Hop. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Look at you. Got it? Careful. There you go, buddy. Isn't that neat? Got it? There you go. It's a little bit of a drop for you guys, huh? There you go. Pretty neat. Ambulance? You like that? Got it? Good? Look at you guys. You guys are good. We have some flashlights and another breathing pack. Okay. And then in here we have extra bottles. So when you run, run out of air, put another bottle on your air pack. Some of the nozzles that we use. You can see how heavy that is. Is that what you put on your hose at home? Is that what you put on your hose at home? That's what they put on their hose. You pass that around. Drop it. This is a different kind. Yeah. They're all over heavy, so be they, careful. They, can I see it? I want to show the other. They're going to talk about what gear they put on, and you're going to get to see them put it on. All right, Sean. This is what's fire. This is what the firefighter is going to look like when he comes into your house looking for you. If you stayed in the house or looking for the fire that we're going to put out. First thing he's putting on is his bunker pants, which is steel toed shoes, fire retardant pants. Next thing is his hood. He doesn't burn his neck or his head. The next thing is his jacket. As you can see he has a flashlight with him. He has his gloves. There's tools in every pocket that he has. He has tools to keep doors open. He has tools to keep his sprinkler shut off. He has tools to help him get himself out of the building if he needed to. He 
next next thing is he's putting on his backpack. That's the air bottle that lets him breathe in a house. It's, it, if your house is filled with smoke, he can still breathe. And the next thing he's going to put on is his mask so he can see. And that's what he breathes through. I put the hood on over the mask so you so can see that there's no skin. There's nothing of him that, that would get burned once he has once he has his gloves on. Now you can see, you can see that he doesn't have any skin, so he's not going to get burned. His hands aren't, his feet aren't, his face isn't. This is the only part that you can see, and that's so he can see. This device here is so he can talk and other, other firefighters can hear him. And that's what he breathes through right now. And you're going to hear how he, how he makes noise. It's hard to do with That noise, listen, that's a, that's a purpose. Listen, that's important. It's a funny noise. And when you see us standing around, everybody's doing that. We call it the little duck wiggle. That's what it sounds like. But if he was to stand still for a minute, then that noise, then you're going to hear that noise, and the rest of us know, now if he doesn't move, it's going to get louder. And we know that we don't need to go in and get him. That's why we never let that noise go on for very long. Because all of us know that that's not a good sound to hear. We're going to go to wherever that sound is to try to find him. That's why he has to move. That's, that's the noise you're going to hear. That noise right there when he comes into your house. So don't be scared of him. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of him. That's this is this is the guy that you need to go to if you're still in your house for some reason you got scared or whatever go to him go to that noise okay you guys hear me yeah that's what i sound like when i want to fire how could you be afraid of a firefighter that doesn't duck wiggle honestly huh? yeah.
He's inside with a coat on and thick pants and gloves, right? So he, they go into hot fires wearing all that stuff. Really, they're really hot, so they gotta drink lots of water. They gotta take breaks. Tell me about your week at Safety Town. What did you like best? Uh, probably learning. Learning? Learning. Learning, okay, what did you learn? Uh, songs and signs and all of those kinds of stuff. And you went around on little bicycles too, right? Did you know before like where to stop and, and that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. So you learned that at, at Safety Town? And what about today with the firefighters? I like that too. They, they looked a little scary, but you know that they're not, right? They're yeah. here to help you. Mm -hmm. So are you going into kindergarten this year or first grade? First grade. Okay. And you're going where, Lake Shore? Yes. Okay, so this stuff, you think you're going to remember it? Yes, probably. Okay. Thank you. 